Given a transfer function, how to represent the system in observable canonical form? That's what we're going to see in this video. For this example transfer function, the numerator order of polynomial m is 3 and denominator order of polynomial is also 3. Where in this case we have m is equal to n, which is a special case. The first step to finding OCF for this system represented by this transfer function is cross multiply the denominator polynomial multiplied with y of s and the u of s multiplied with the numerator polynomial so let me write this here y times s cube plus 9 s square plus 23 s plus 15 is equal to u times s cube plus 12 s square plus 44 s plus 48 now I'm going to keep y times s cube on the left half of the equation and send everything else to the right side. So I can write s cube u plus 12 s square u plus 44 s u plus 48 u minus the rest of the terms with the y on this side. 9 s square y minus 23 s y plus 15 y. Now on the right side of the equation, I'm going to group the terms based on the power of s. So first thing, s cubed times u plus s square. We have for s square, 12 times u minus 9 times y. So let me write it here, 12 times u minus 9 times y plus s times, we have 44u minus 23y. And s for 0 terms are 48u minus 15y. This is equal to y s cube. Now I'm going to rewrite this expression by just y is equal to. Now which means s cube is sent to the other side divided by. So we have s cube over s cube is simply 1 times u plus s for minus 1 times 12u minus 9y plus s for minus 2 times 44u minus 23y plus s for minus 3 times 48u minus 15y. This is in a form where y is equal to a times u plus x1 where x1 I'm defining as a state variable. Now in this case if we see the expression a is 1 because the multiplication factor here is simply 1 and the rest of the terms that we have here is x1 state variable so we'll write this expression now I'm going to write this in s domain which is y equals to 1 times u plus state variable x1 its equivalent time equation will be y is equal to u plus x1 so this is our first equation and now we have expression for x1 x1 is equal to now I'm going to write this expression as s times x1 which will be equal to 12u minus 9y plus s power minus 1 because I'm multiplying everywhere with s I have 44u minus 23y plus s power minus 2 times 48u minus 15y. This in time domain can be written as x1 dot which is nothing but differentiation of x1 in, in time domain is equal to 12 times u minus 9 times y we're writing here in time domain plus I can write this as x2, the second state variable. But as I am writing in time domain, this will be small x2. So this is our second equation. And if I can take the expression x2 can be written as s inverse times 44u minus 23y plus s power minus 2 times 48u minus 15y. Now we're going to find what is s times x2 which will be 44u minus 23y plus s inverse of 48u minus 15y. And this whole procedure that we're doing is repetitive and we can go on doing it till the point that we will see. 
where this can be this equation can be written in time domain as x2 dot is equal to 44u minus 23y plus x3 the third state variable that we have defined here now we can write x3 in s domain as s inverse of 48u minus 15y in s domain we can write s times x3 is equal to 48u minus 15y so we can write x3 dot in time domain is equal to 48u minus 15y now we have this expression and this expression as the order of the system is 3 we need only three state variables to be defined which we already have here which are x1 x2 and x3 and we know the expressions for x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot which creates the first state equations and we have the output equation as well y equals to u plus x1 so this makes the second equation to find the state space representation of the system in observable canonical form so let me write all the expressions that we have we have these four equations we know we are supposed to represent this in standard state equations form which is x dot vector is equal to a times x the state variables plus b times the input u and output equation y is equal to c times x plus d times u we're supposed to represent them in this form where a is 3 by 3 matrix which is system matrix now in order to represent them we know x dot should depend on x and u but in our equations x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot all of them depend on x u as well as y but the equation we are not supposed to have in terms of y so we have what is y here let us substitute this y in x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot so these equations would become x1 dot is equal to 12u minus 9y in in space of y we substitute u plus x1 so we have 12u minus 9u minus 9x1 plus x2 we can rewrite this as 3u minus 9x1 plus x2 this is x1 dot so this is one expression second one we can write x2 dot is equal to 44u minus 23u minus 23x1 plus x3 we can write this as x2 dot is equal to 44 minus 23 is 21u minus 23x1 plus x3 this is the second expression and the third and last one x3 dot is equal to 48u minus 15u minus 15x1 we can write this as x3 dot is equal to 48 minus 15 is 33 u minus 15 x1 this is the third expression so we have now all x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot in terms of x1 x2 x3 and u so we can write the first expression here which is x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot is equal to the 3 by 3 matrix because the system order is 3 we'll have 3 by 3 x1 x2 x3 here plus the b matrix which will be 3 cross 1 matrix times u this is matrix a this is matrix b so now x1 dot equation if you see it depends on x1 x2 and u so x1 the coefficient is minus 9 and x2 the coefficient is 1 x3 the coefficient is 0 because x1 dot doesn't depend on x3 directly and in terms of u it is 3 so now we can write x1 dot as minus 9 times x1 1 times x2 0 times x3 all summation plus 3 times u that's what this expression represents now x2 dot is equal to we have minus 23 times x1 0 times x2 because it doesn't directly depend on x2 and 1 times x3 and 21 times the input now x3 dot depends on x1 and u so x2 and x3 are 0 it doesn't depend on x2 and x3 
in terms of x1 it is minus 15 and we have in terms of u 33 so we have written the state equation here now we need to write the output equation which is y is equal to the matrix c times the state vector which is x1 x2 x3 plus the d matrix in this case it is one cross one because single input single output system now let us find what is y depending on y depends on x1 so x1 is 1 it doesn't depend directly on x2 or x3 so 0 0 and it depends on u so 1 so we can write y as 1 times x1 plus 0 times x2 plus 0 times x3 plus 1 times u so this is the state representation of the transfer function we have seen in terms of observable canonical form we'll understand why this is called observable only when we discuss observability of a system having seen state and output equations now it is time to see how does these equations show up in terms of signal flow graphs so I'm taking x1 the state variable here and we know x1 dot if we have x1 dot we need to integrate x1 dot to get x1 which is 1 over s so x1 dot if we integrate we get x1 now but x1 dot depends on input and x1 and x2 so we will have x1 dot is equal to let me take the input to be here u it depends on 3 times u so multiply this with 3 3 times u minus 9 times x1 plus x2 so let me take x2 which is here so x2 in terms of 1 now we have completed x1 dot let us see x2 dot we know this is x2 that's why we have written x1 dot is x2 minus 9x1 plus 3u x2 dot would be somewhere here we need to integrate x2 dot 1 over s to get x2 but x2 dot is as such given by 21 times this is x2 dot which is 21 times u minus 23 times x1 so let me take it here minus 23 times x1 plus x3 so x3 is somewhere here one times so this is x3 we will get x3 if we integrate x3 dot so 1 over s this is x3 dot so but x3 dot is given by 33 times u which means I need to take u 33 times minus 15 x1 which means x1 I'm taking here and taking all the way to x3 dot which is minus 15 now we have completed all the state variable description in the signal flow graph we have three integrators integrator transfer function is 1 over s 1 2 3 times representing the order of the system is 3 we have only completed three expressions in representing signal flow graph let us look at the output expression which is y equals to u plus x1 so y would be equal to this is x1 we are taking 1 times x1 because y is equal to 1 times x1 plus 1 times u the input so to make it look simple I am writing y again here with a magnitude 1 multiplication so both are same so let me take similarly u here with 1 so this is how the signal flow graph looks for observable canonical form one thing to remember compared to controllable canonical form at any node the signals are coming in if you observe see from input to this node and from x1 to this node again at this node input to this node x1 to this node even here input to this node x1 to this node incoming signals whereas in controllable canonical form it was always outgoing which means we were sampling the state variable values from that point to either input or output whereas here it's opposite all signals are coming in whereas in controllable canonical form all were going out if you find this video useful don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you have any questions please post it below the video thank you for watching again